I'm Mike Huckman at the BioBuzz Center, where I'm pleased to be joined by Anthony Rayside, who is the head of research at a company called Evaluate Pharma. And Evaluate is out with a new report today, Anthony, um, that essentially looks across the horizon from 2015 out to 2020 in life sciences. So what are a few of the key takeaways from that new report that you just issued? Yeah, that, that's right, Mike. Um, so the World Preview Report, it looks at the, um, the industry to 2020. So the key finding of the report is that it's a good news story. You're finding that the, the, the industry is predicted to have very robust industry growth to 2020, growth at around 5% per year. Mm -hmm. And we're projecting sales of around a trillion dollars, just, just under a trillion dollars. Mm -hmm. And it, it's really supported by uh, kind of less pattern exposure than historically has happened, but also the, there's been a wave of new products hitting the market that uh, are basically fueling sales growth, particularly in the US market. Um, also, we're finding an improving R&D productivity picture. There's a number of dynamics behind that. So we're seeing 2014 was the best year ever for FDA approvals. There was 50 approvals versus 35 the year before. Mm. And the quality of those uh, product approvals is, is massively improved. You have products like Opdivo, um, Harvoni hitting the market and generating- These are medicines for? Yeah, for hepatitis C, uh, for, 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 for cancer products like Op Opdivo for, for melanoma, that are generating sales very quickly because of the, the, the clear benefits they ha have over existing treatments. Um, also, the, there's a back, background of like cost containment around R&D spend. We're finding that companies on the whole are kind of holding back on R&D spend. They're, they're focusing more on smaller patient population sizes, which cost less. So overall, we're finding R&D spend is predicted to increase about 2% per year mm -hmm. to 2020, at around 170 billion. And also, with, with the release of these new products, you kind of expect the pipeline to have actually dropped back a bit, but actually there's a wave of new breakthrough treatments replenishing the pipeline in the industry. And at Evaluate, we, we value that pipeline and we have the, the overall industry pipeline actually increased in value 18% to about half a trillion dollars. So there's you know, a number of indicators that are signifying this growth trend is gonna continue into the future. Anthony, one of the things as well that Evaluate calls out as a highlight of this report is that companies, and I'm quoting from your press release now, will have to make compromises around global pricing and access. As such, pharmaceutical companies need to either accept lower prices or persuade payers the therapeutic benefits outweigh the cost burdens of the particular disease. I think I think the rules of the game have changed. I mean, I think, I think companies themselves are, are, are chronically aware really that they have to differentiate their product if they're going to get a, a premium price. So it's, it's really up to the company to communicate the, the benefits, whether they're taking costs out of, uh, out of hospital setting or improve, improving the quality of life. But I think what we're seeing with these, these breakthrough therapies is, is we're not going from small incremental improvements, we're going to kind of step changes in therapy. So if, as long as the, the companies can communicate that, then they can, they can kind of control that friction. I think the companies that have to worry are the ones that are poorly differentiated or operating in, in quite genericized markets, that they'll, they'll be squeezed. Because at the, at the end of the day, you know, people don't want to pay higher you know, pre insurance premiums, you know, the, the budgets are slightly constrained, so they'll be looking to shift money around. But as, I think as long as the, the companies can, can show that, that this is a kind of a step change improvement in, in patient care, mm -hmm. then they can get these higher prices. Because at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's the innovation and the patient benefits that is creating the high price. They're not just high price for the, you know, for, by themselves. Anthony Rayside, the head of research at Evaluate Pharma. Thanks for joining us here at the BioBus Center. Thank you.